So finding a position that offers you alertness and calm. So you don't want to be rigid or tight, but you want to be regal, sitting up in a comfortable but tall manner. If you're able to not relax against the back of the chair, that will increase alertness. I find it helpful when I begin meditation to think of a couple of things that I'm grateful for. So I invite you to consider one or two things that you are grateful for as a way of brightening the mind Beginning very simply, feeling the aliveness that you have been gifted with for yet another day. This mystery this miracle of aliveness. And bringing now a kindly attention as we move through the body and offer care. We can begin with the brow, inviting a smoothing. A relaxation of the brow. bringing a kind attention into the eyes. Experiencing and inviting a softening in the eyes. The eyes that have served us today and all the days of our life. allowing that kindly attention to cascade and move throughout the face, all the tiny facial muscles that have been smiling, frowning, puzzling today.
inviting an ease, softening, If you notice your jaw is clenched, just slightly unhinge it. Invite a softening and ease even to the base of your tongue. Extending that careful, kind attention into the neck and shoulders, areas where we often carry our tension. Experiencing from the inside out coming to know both the aliveness and spaciousness. with an invitation of the shoulders to relax, to settle, to let go, let be. And allowing the attention to extend into the arms Experiencing again the aliveness and volume of space. From the inside out, from the marrow of the bones. and allowing attention to settle for a few moments in the hands. Noticing the contact wherever they are, they are resting. Noticing the aliveness And bringing now that kind attention to the rib cage. You might notice the gentle expansion on the inhale. And a relaxation on the exhale.
intention of appreciation even to those organs that are pr protected by the rib cage, heart, lungs. Those organs that have served us. And allowing the attention now to move to the lower portion of the torso. the abdomen, the small of the back, the sides. Inviting ease, softening. Bringing attention into the hips, the buttocks, the genitals. Now into the legs, feeling that full volume of space and aliveness. And finally, resting attention for some moments in the feet. Experiencing the feet from the inside out. And taking some moments now, bringing attention, special attention to any area of your body that's been wounded. Not so much trying to change anything, just standing with that wounded area. Just as you'd stand with a friend who was hurting. And finally, I invite you to take a moment of appreciation for this body. 
And although each of us may have portions of our body that is not working, maybe as it used to or as we would like it to, the sum of all the systems that make up this miracle was able to get us here today, has kept us alive. And if it is helpful for you now finding a place to rest your attention, if it's the breath or a portion of the breath, connecting and sustaining that connection the best that you are able. Coming up close to the breath, the beautiful breath, life-giving. Exploring the qualities of the breath. Appreciating the continuing miracle.
notice that you've been in a story. Just simply know that you now awakened without judgment or harshness. And rest in that rediscovered awakening. Allowing your nervous system to know it, to become sensitized to the difference between being awake present and being in a story, remembering, fantasizing, planning, whatever. And spending as much time as you'd like in that newfound awakening. No hurry to go back to your anchor. And taking another small step of self-compassion before you connect with the anchor. By taking some moments to re-relax. Soften in the face and shoulders. And then when you're ready, connecting with the breath or your anchor.
And may the wholesome intentions and energy and efforts of our meditation tonight, may those energies be combined with the wholesome intentions and efforts of all contemplatives, those of the past, those in the present, and those of the future. And together may those energies serve the welfare, the happiness, and the freedom of all beings. Just a few words about um, working with the breath. Uh, the Buddha taught over 40 different meditations. And the breath meditation has been an important one. And what I've found that if you're using the breath, that if it's possible over time to develop a, an affectionate relationship with the breath, some appreciation. And if you can fall in love with the breath, um, it results in a greater capacity and ability to kind of gather and unify the heart and mind around that object, that anchor, which results in a uh, more profound samadhi which then, of course, results in more profound insights. So if the breath is boring for you, I encourage you to see what you could do to enhance that relationship. See what might be possible. You know, maybe reflecting on the, the fact how the breath connects us with the outside. We're breathing in and we're breathing out, and it's just this kind of bellow that's connecting with our biosphere. And where would we be today without it? We don't know where we'd be, but it wouldn't be here. And so the preciousness, the connectedness, might be a way for a a more appreciative relationship.